Hey guys, apologies for my latest absence. I have not been a well Chris, but I am going to persevere and get a video through to you today. But I do have to also apologize in advance for any disgusting noises that might come across on the microphone. I'm going to try and edit out as many as possible and my voice isn't going to sound as uh, smooth or whatever as it usually does. But Nevertheless, uh, I have been playing around with Pop OS lately, and this is the Linux distribution. It's based on um, 17.10 Ubuntu, although the recent or the, the, the beta before this was based on the 17.04 version of Ubuntu. So it does appear that this system 76 um, made distribution that's based on Ubuntu is based on the latest six monthly release cycle. Now this distribution uh, is still in beta so anything I say here is subject to change and I have to you know the, the previous images that I've tested have changed quite a lot so and it, well I mean the distribution has changed quite a lot since then so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this distribution. I've been using it quite a lot actually. Since I've been unwell, I've not really been dist distro hopping as much as I have usually been. So uh, I've gotten to know this distribution quite well and I've got quite a few things to say about it. Now, this is not just your typical Ubuntu reskin. So their website here, system76.com uh, forward slash pop. So this is a reasonably easy URL to remember because the actual name of the OS pop with an exclamation mark, then the underscore, then the OS is, it's it's a it's a little uh, unique. We'll use that word there. Um, and there is plenty of information there in that sort of mobile friendly uh, kind of uh, website design. Now, the first thing they do that's a little bit different is that they give you two download images, but it's dependent on your graphics card. Now, this is really good because I think most people will know whether or not they've got a NVIDIA or a Intel slash AMD graphics card. Even if you buy a computer off the shelf, it usually has the NVIDIA logo on the front if it is or whatever. Um, and it gives you a little bit of the the information around that and I've never seen a distribution or that I can remember right now do the same but uh, considering that it is a bit of a faff to get NVIDIA drivers on Ubuntu and just about any distribution I think Manjaro has an option off the boot menu uh, that allows you to do so and I found that to be particularly easy but I've never found it done as, a, as an image before that makes a lot of sense, especially if your distro is only going to have the one desktop environment. And they, it appears they do this by design. This is supposed to be perhaps the most user-friendly uh, distribution you can get imaginable. This might be if you were to buy a, uh, a Linux-based machine for a friend or family member who might not really be particularly familiar with Linux, but uh, you know wants a privacy-respecting operating system, wants to move away from Windows, isn't necessarily interested in a Mac, this might be the direction that you would push them in. And if they sort of grow to become more uh, informed about their computer and wish to have uh, a wider scope of choices, this is something that they can uh, build off of. So I thought I'm going to just go out on a limb here and say for the vast majority of people who watch this channel, and please correct me if I'm wrong, this distribution will not be super interesting because it is uh, Ubuntu that is made incredibly user-friendly. So if you are already familiar with the ins and outs of Ubuntu and you already know what sort of theme you want, what your desktop desktop applications are going to be, what your desktop wallpaper is going to be, you, you know, eventually, basically, after a few months of using Pop OS, uh, it, it will almost be indistinguishable from uh, Ubuntu, you, you know, once you've installed the same applications and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of this is the out-of-the-box experience in a very similar way to how uh, like Linux Mint and Elementary is as well. Um, it does use the GNOME 3 desktop and it uses a very um, classic GNOME 3 desktop actually. Uh, so you've got the, the, the GNOME 3 bar at the top there. Um, you don't click, you, it, I've, one thing I, that I did find is quite interesting is they have tweaked it, but um, they haven't included the tweak tool and they've included actually very little. If I go down to the uh, show applications, right, these are all the applications that came with it. Now in the last release that was based on 17.04, there were a few more applications, so they've taken some out. There used to be Rhythmbox there. I, had, I've, I haven't used Rhythmbox in years. Uh, if I wanted to put something into a playlist, to be honest, um, uh, Totem or VLC or even MPV now has um, playlist support. So um, is that even here available in the menu or is it going to be like hidden away in something like utility? Yeah, it is. it's in utilities there. So it's got some kind of like a, a structure here, but this this resembles more of a mobile interface than it does 
um, a, a Windows desktop or a Mac desktop, and I kind of like that as well. It sort of has that feel. Um, when you log in for the first time, and one of the things it also does differently to Ubuntu is that you install the distribution, and I, it, it seems pretty much that the only download image you get, or the only choice in download images you get, are, are these two. So if you wanted what was an effectively an OEM uh, manufacturer image, you wanted to install the distribution on your uh, laptop, but you didn't necessarily want to set up a, a username, a password, and uh, the localization settings. You could then just stop before it goes into the first reboot, the first boot, uh, and that's where you set up your username and password and all that kind of stuff as well. So you can install uh, this distribution on a friend or family member's laptop, and they could still have that essential fresh experience, which is uh, which is really quite interesting as well. So again, less images to download. They seem to just have. This distribution seems to be more defined by what's taken away and what's not there rather than what is there as well. So, and the fact that it is seemingly going to be based on the six monthly updates of Ubuntu, uh, it does seem that you're going to get some pretty up to date software as well. So, there's the page. It doesn't overwhelm me with information because, again, if you want to know more about the distribution, have a look at Ubuntu. It comes with Firefox as standard. However, on the laptop that I've been testing it, now this I am showing it to you today is in a virtual machine, but I assure you that I've been testing it on my Entroware laptop and it runs beautifully as well. Uh, absolute zero screen tearing off the Intel card because some of the older desktop environments, I gotta say, if you don't have compositing enabled, there is that little bit of screen tearing there, but there is zero screen tearing on this one as well. So that is particularly good. And I have been trying out the Waterfox browser, which I'm sure I'll do a video about at some point uh, when I'm a bit more fighting fit. It. Um, it's a really good browser. It's basically Firefox with a lot of the problem problematic elements taken out. And um, uh, yeah, I downloaded the binary and I ran that, and that runs really well as as well. So um, and it and it themes well as well. So speaking of theming, I'm just going to pull up the. Um, KeyPass X. Now this is just an application that I use to make sure that theming uh, works well across Qt4 applications, uh, and it does, as you can see here. In fact, the uh, everything seemed to uh, work particularly well in regards to theming. Now, also one thing I do want to note about the user interface is that it only has the close button. It has the close button on the right-hand side, which is nice. Um, I've not actually found that to be particularly um, lacking. I thought I, I really thought it would be. I thought I would eventually at some point crack and I would install um, the GNOME Tweak tool. And I decided not to because I knew that if I installed the GNOME Tweak tool, eventually, step by step, day by day, this would just become GNOME Ubuntu, which is fine. It's a great distribution, but I wanted to test out Pop OS and what made it different. Okay, so one thing which I thought would eventually cause me to install the GNOME Tweak tool was the lack of the maximize and minimize buttons over here on the right hand side of every window. Um, I thought that would be the case because I just use them so regularly. However, because of the way how GNOME just organizes the desktop, you just click on activities and it just lines up everything there. Now, that doesn't look particularly smooth since I'm running it in a virtual machine here, but uh, on the uh, on the Entroware laptop, which is the entry level Entroware laptop as well, uh, it runs absolutely fine. Um, you would think that something as nice looking as, as GNOME and as, as you know with as many desktop effects as GNOME that there might be some issue there, but not at all. It runs it runs absolutely fine, and I was uh, yeah and enjoying um, just sort of day to day uh, work on it, and uh, and and suffered no problems whatsoever. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and I did find that instead of like the minimize maximize, so you, you know you can you can lay out the the desktop like that, but also right click minimize maximize. That pretty much keeps you covered. And you can also double click on the title bar there to maximize itself um, as well. So you do have your options there. I don't necessarily feel the need to go out there and remove them, but you know it doesn't seem to be like a particularly big UI misstep. Okay, so this is what files looks like. This is just your standard files for GNOME. Um, one issue I did have with it, and it's not Pop OS's fault, but it was with Dropbox, and it's not Dropbox's fault either. And that was that because this is an up-to-date version of the GNOME desktop, you may notice one thing missing, and that is the notification icon. So you know the little icons where if you install Steam or Skype or Dropbox, you get a little icon there that you can just summon the program with. They've completely removed those um, so that they're basically relying on, uh, instead of having an icon, that you just have a, you know, a minimized to dock or it would just appear uh, in the dock on the left-hand side down here. 
This is a problem because with Dropbox, you need to uh, be able to right click on the icon in the notification tray in order to adjust the settings. Now, this isn't too much of a problem if you're happy with Dropbox's default features all of the time. Unfortunately, it is a slight failing on Dropbox part that uh, it relies so heavily on the notification uh, icon in the system tray um, and there's no like command line way to get around it there's no command line way to summon the configuration options or anything like that which you know it, it is a bit of a shame possibly a bit of an oversight there um, and there isn't an option to um, minimize to the, the equivalent of the taskbar instead of um, the system tray so that there is that but ultimately this is GNOME 3's fault for just taking out the notification tray without you know the, the, just just outright and, and expecting programs to work around it like that is that is a little bit of hubris in the popularity of the gnome desktop and i think it's going to cause some pretty sizable problems so uh anyway um i've i've actually uh sort of take taken up with the, the folks at dropbox and they say that they're you know looking into it but i don't know what necessarily that resolutions you know i don't know what resolution is necessarily going to come out of that maybe they just don't think the gnome desktop is going to be worth supporting or maybe they will uh come around to some kind of fix or maybe gnome might see some sense and allow some applications to have you know a system tray right up in the top right hand corner what's the problem with that you know it's i don't know it's, 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 it's a bit uh, ludicrous if you ask me so all of that aside Let's have a look at the App Store. Now, I'm always interested in the App Store, and I always want the App Store to be as user-friendly and easy as possible. This is the front page of the App Store. I'm calling it the App Store because that is effectively how I would describe it to someone that wouldn't, uh, you know, wouldn't know what a software repository is or a package manager or anything like that. This is just the, the App Store, software store. It's where you get your software. And look at that. That is a nice, clean interface. And you know exactly where you are. It's nice, colorful. It's user -friendly. It's engaging. It's user-friendly. So you've got, you've got video, you've got internet, and then you just click on internet, and it, it does give you just the, the, the full alphabetized list. But the search is up there, and the search works. Almost everything within the, the, the window has a purpose, and it has a relevant purpose. There aren't bells and whistles that you don't need, which is, you know, it's blessing and it's curse as a distribution, but um, it's certainly going for the, the beginner market, the, the, the first-time Linux user. Um, but then again, I do feel that in many ways, it makes a lot of sense for System76 to to develop a distribution that suits its goals like that, especially when you've got like Canonical changing up their desktop. In, well, I mean, Canonical and GNOME. Between Canonical and GNOME, they've changed up the most popular desktop environment for Linux three times over the past 10 years. That's really, you know, you've gone from GNOME to to Unity, to GNOME 3. That's 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 three sizable leaps. And, and maybe, you know, you can expect that from Windows, but with Windows, there are over a billion people, I, I imagine, to offer support and guidance through that. The, the you know, the 10-year-old kid down the, down the end of the road knows how to, to adapt to those kind of changes. You know, your, your, you know, your next door neighbor will, or, or your, your church pastor or whatever, you know, like there are people around you in your community that would uh, be able to work with Windows. With Linux, you don't necessarily have that immediate, you know, the, the person sitting next to you on the bus or whatever isn't necessarily going to know how you're going to cope with all the different uh, UI changes. So I do feel that Linux has a little bit, or Linux di distributions do have a little bit of an obligation to be more consistent in this department. And that's where I feel that System76 is trying to lead the way here. Now, it's sort of, you know, it looks a bit like you know, Android, I guess. It's got that kind of android -y feel to it. But at the same time, uh, and also, whereas I'm a big fan of the traditional, um, what's it called, uh, Redmond paradigm, where you have the start menu at the bottom left, and, it, it, you know, that's the same across Windows and Linux as well. Uh, this is quite straightforward as well. I mean, we're used to seeing taskbars at the top, you know, a la um, iOS and, uh, and Android. And Activities, you know, that's like the one button, it's worded on the screen, you click on that, and it gives you, you know, a lot of what you need to do. A lot of it is visual. I don't know enough about UI and human psychology to know whether or not that's intuitive enough. A lot of the time I tend to err on the uh, side of text, because text is descriptive, whereas an image can be open to interpretation, like these applications. Do I know that the one on the left there means Ethernet? 
I, I guess the one in the middle there means sound that does kind of look like a speaker but it's not necessarily obvious and well we all know that as, as a universal power sign but I remember as a kid sort of taking longer than maybe I should have to have worked that out because it's it, you know looking at it objectively it doesn't look necessarily obvious um, and you've got different desktops of course down here which you can kind of comfortably ignore I guess maybe if you wanted to or people would work that out eventually uh, a lot of what you can do is done on search and the windows key does work to summon that as well so you know as a windows you know if you have the windows key a lot of people might associate that with the ability to bring up a menu you, t you press the windows key start typing eventually you're going to get what you want on the screen as well so yeah definitely um a lot of consideration has gone into the uh, the UI um, in terms of like yeah obviously System76 wanted to build on top of a uh, on top of one of the big desktop environments because that's going to be the most well supported it's going to uh, work best on the most amount of hardware it's going to play games the best and all that kind of stuff uh, and while at the same time GNOME is you know it has its issues it's not always the most stable all of the time again neither is KDE uh, or Plasma and um, it's not necessarily exactly, you know, um, fitting within the continuity of things like Windows. So it's not it's not like a Windows parallel. But then again, Windows changes up a lot. And uh, I always have found both GNOME 2 and GNOME 3 to be intuitive in terms of just getting software up and running for it. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that they're on to a winner. And I think that there is uh, a decent purpose in this. And I do think that they were right in, uh, in, in making it based off of the latest Ubuntu um, short-term release the six monthly cycle okay so I think we should take a quick look at the settings this is of course gonna have a little bit of a reflection on GNOME 3 as well as the pop OS distribution itself but I did like that they gave you a healthy selection of background wallpapers some photographs some that are uh, you know the, the OS sort of promo images kind of thing as well as just some nice graphically designed um, sci-fi images here so uh i uh gotta say i i really like that and and it's a small it's a small touch but it is something that uh that i that i like to see particularly user-friendly distributions just make an effort in because it kind of shows that they've just thought that little step ahead that they haven't done the bare minimum that they have made it more of a um an experience where people don't have where people have to do less to to get where they want their distribution to be so one of the things that i was asked when i logged in for the first time here is about online accounts and it gave you a lot of these so i found that to be quite interesting yeah there are a few here um and i got to be completely honest here i don't think i have ever logged in to my desktop with one of these accounts because why i don't completely understand i guess i think with things like google it syncs to your google calendar and it syncs to all, all your other stuff there but in all honesty i'm perfectly fine with well i'm on postio of course as you guys know and um a lot of that stuff is just done through um the calendar and the um the the open source apps available on the uh the phone so i don't necessarily have too much of an issue there um but yeah you do have plenty of these login options which i think is all part of gnome but the pop os does specifically ask you as well um as um whether or not it should turn your location on for example and i like the fact that it does ask you about location sharing right from the off and it gives you a yes no uh, switch which is quite good so uh, and these privacy items are uh, yeah so you can you can turn location services on or off there as well this is a nice little control panel um, and again I like the fact that it's it's you know labeled rather than just offers up um, icons which I think when it comes to settings that's generally the case because you don't want to be ambiguous at all and the settings are perhaps the the workings behind the scenes a little bit there but I found uh, it very rare to ever go into the settings once I just set the background wallpaper and I think a few of the touchpad settings I was pretty much fine there so all in all I've got to say I'm really really impressed with this but it is a distribution that you would introduce a newcomer to Linux on Otherwise, you would probably want to put them onto an Ubuntu variant of your choice. 
Um, it runs with uh, Ubuntu, so uh, all the same Ubuntu software that runs on 17.10. Of course, that changes with, with each release. Uh, yeah, so this is referred to as Pop OS 17.10. I don't know if they're going to carry on that versioning system. I hope they do, because that makes it very easy to work out um, that it's compatible with Ubuntu software. But another reason I think is particularly good that um, System76 have decided to basically apply this, and I'm, I say it's a reskin, I don't say that in a derogatory way, and I don't say that in a way, like, uh, I, I, I am very much doing it a disservice, because they have done a lot to improve the user experience here. It's got the, you know, I love Ubuntu as a distribution on the back end, it is fantastic, I know it's got its critics, but I, for the most part, am not one of them, obviously, it's not a perfect distribution, no distribution is, but it's really good, and this is a great front end for it, but it should there come a day when Ubuntu and Canonical just make that, that decision that pushes companies like System76 just a little bit too far? Because Ubuntu do seem to be steering in the direction of uh, a developer-friendly distribution, which certainly makes a lot of sense. First of all, you want more developers on Linux outright in general. It just makes a healthier uh, ecosystem of software. Um, but also, those are it, they do seem to be the majority of people that are picking up Linux machines these days, but not the only people. And if you are making, and also, uh, those are the kind of people that are generally going to be quite happy and competent enough to install their distribution of choice, or at least install Ubuntu on top of that. Whereas if you bought a distribution off, uh, if you bought a laptop or desktop off the shelf, um, this is a distribution I'd like to see on it, more, more so than Ubuntu, because it is a little bit more um, newbie friendly. And it doesn't, you don't require any Linux experience to be able to use this. Uh, one thing I do find a little bit interesting is that they do include the terminal here in the quick launch icons. Now, I like that because I use the terminal quite a lot. Maybe I might have buried that in terms of in, in the uh, in the menu down here, like I think they do in Fedora. I don't know. Um, but I know that there might be one or two distributions that put, sort of tuck the terminal away a little bit more. Again, this is a beta release and they do make a lot of changes, but it does look very nice. Um, it, it works very well with the hardware that I've tested it on. And yeah, like I say, if there's that day that Canonical and Ubuntu just go a step too far, what a company like System76 System slash PopOS can do is then perhaps change the back end. They can change maybe instead of having the Ubuntu based distribution, they can go to a Fedora based distribution or a CentOS based distribution or a, an Arch based distribution. And if they keep the front end as um, you know, is with that continued branding and that continued uh, you know that that continuity on the desktop then very few people should even ever notice, but they still reap the technical benefits of whatever distribution they decide to base their operating system off of. So they have the benefit of continuity and the benefit of uh, their choice in backend technology. So that's really good. Uh, System76 have always been quite good. If it was other, you know, if, if it were other companies, I might be a little bit more skeptical because, as I think I might have said on my last gaming stream, is that during the days when netbooks were taking off as like really cheap uh, sort of computers that might not necessarily be your primary, primary computer, and we started seeing a lot of Linux based netbooks because it managed to keep the cost down. You could pick up a netbook for about like maybe 100 quid, 120 quid. And uh, the issue with with that was that you just got this company from the arse end of nowhere developing a what was well a Linux distribution that that was not really open source. I very much doubt they ever really released the source code. Probably broke all kinds of uh, you know GPL compliance rules and all that kind of stuff. Um, and certainly wouldn't have been updated and um, and supported past past purchasing. And really, all it did was offer a, a an environment for a web browser and an email client anyway. So. Um, and, and to be honest, I think that probably made Linux look quite bad, and it certainly made the the same hardware, but with Windows installed on it, look a lot better because you could do a lot more with it. Even with the the terrible was it Windows CE that that, that didn't you know it didn't let you do that much, but it probably you know but it did let you do more than whatever the the Linux based horrific distributions were on it. And I I played around with them, and yeah, like they were fine. You could just easily install um, a like a 32-bit version of Linux on top of them, but but your average person either you know was going to be too lazy or not interested, or even you know like had no idea that you could you could do that, or even what Linux was. So um, so yeah, System76 definitely seemed to be pulling in the right direction with this one, um, and uh, you know I've seen every sign I've seen indicates that they're good. 
uh, Linux citizens in this in this ecosystem. They've done uh, they've done nothing but support Linux and the Linux community, and they've done a lot of good things. From what I've seen, I'm not super familiar with the company, but um, I I hear I, I don't think I've heard a bad thing about them. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it runs well on the Entroware laptop, so maybe we'll, maybe we'll see other laptop or desktop manufacturers pick up this distribution um, as well. And uh, you know, as as long as as, lo as long as Ubuntu don't mind, or or you know, it doesn't take away from Ubuntu, and I hope it doesn't. I mean, there might be branding and marketing issues there that might arise at some point, and maybe it could be, you know, Pop OS supported by Ubuntu in, in right and underneath or something like that. Anyway. I'm starting to ramble on a little more than I should do. It's probably the cold medicine, but um, yeah, I'll um, I recommend you guys check it out. It doesn't run particularly well in a virtual machine. I do have to say that's just GNOME three in a nutshell, though. Um, but uh, on 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 bare metal, it runs beautifully, and uh, and and I had zero issues with screen tearing. I got to say on the Entroware laptop, it has the Intel card, and if it doesn't have a GPU supported window manager. Uh, screen tearing can become a little bit of an issue, especially if I'm watching YouTube, especially, especially if I'm watching 60 frames per second or high definition or anything like that. So uh, as is the case, but then again, you know, it's got an Intel graphics card, it's got the drivers to support it. So just as long as I've got a uh, hardware supported desktop, like GNOME 3, like on Pop! OS, then it's really good. And I like the fact that it gives, it doesn't give you very much choice. And the choice it gives you, it gives you in a very straightforward manner. But um, I think a lot of distributions, they try and offer a, a mix of desktop environments, and that's great for, uh, for, for, for people who are into their hardware. But for people that just want something to pick up and go that's nice and usable and functional, and maybe play a few games on the side, this is perfect. And I like to see... I like to see it get legs and, and, and move on. I was a little bit worried about System76 going off on one. I mean, I know they're a good company, so if any company was going to do it, I'm glad it's them. But, uh, oh, fading out there a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, all signs are positive so far. So, yeah, uh, feel free to check it out. I uh, Let me know if you guys think that you would ever use it as a, as, a main desktop uh, as, as a main desktop operating system. But I do feel that if I were to use this the way that I you know truly wanted to rather than the way that it's supposed to be used um it would just it would just turn into ubuntu uh, ubuntu no or soon to be ubuntu in a, in a couple of months time and you know you might as well just go to the source at that point but uh you know i like the fact that they they seem to have kept the back end pure and the front end aesthetically pleasing so before my voice finally gives out on me thank you very much guys for watching let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below as always and until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now